This is Nick Headhunter Chapman. Fighting out of RJA Prize Fighters and Andy Robbins Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Nick Chapman! Considered one of the UK's premier mixed martial arts athletes and undefeated in his MMA career. Chapman wins by arm triangle. In eight weeks' time, Nick will square off against a very tough and experienced MMA fighter with one goal, to become the UK1 MMA light heavyweight champion. This is Nick Headhunter Chapman as you've never seen him before, uncensored and uncut. This is his story. It's 6 a.m. in a leafy suburb of Surrey, and I'm going to meet one of the UK's most promising and widely talked about mixed martial arts athletes, Nick Headhunter Chapman. Morning. Good morning. Nice <coughs> and early. How are you today? Tired. <laughs> Aching. But good. You? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing new there, then. Nah. This is life. <laughs> My joints hurt. Always in the mornings. Yeah. But I loosen up and I feel okay. Right. And with the introductions over, right. it's time for Nick to pound the pavement in his early morning well, run. Part of my uh, routine of the day. This is um, something that I'm going to be honest with you. I don't enjoy. <laughs> I do it, but I don't enjoy it. Um, but I have to. It kind of gets me going in the mornings. Gets me up and ready. I don't go uh, crazy, but. Just, uh, just gets me warmed up and raring to go for training because I train early every day. So I go for a quick run, just loosen up the joints, get the heart rate pumping, blood flowing around the body. Because I'm a big guy, I don't think I was built for running. I was more the guy kind of built for standing up fighting than running. <laughs> but um, as you'll probably see in a minute, I look like a blooming tank trying to run up the road, but uh, it definitely, definitely sets me up for the day. But it's important to have a decent pair of trainers for this. I used to get all sorts of problems in my knees and stuff, and uh, I think I found out the reason why. It's, uh, not such good running trainers. When Nick finally returns, I'm surprised to learn just how active he is with his fan mail and responding to fan requests. How early do you start responding to fans? Do you know, it's funny. <coughs> the whole day I've got Twitter, email, obviously responses through Fight Science website, responses through the Nick Headhunter Chapman website, and Facebook fan page as well. Um, literally now, just looking in now, I've got six messages. Um, I wake up first thing in the morning. The first thing I do is I go through my routine, I make my food, I sit down with my porridge and I answer every single message. There's not one comment, one message that I don't answer. I always answer back. Um, so I spend pretty much most of the day on and off just flicking through. If I leave it to the end of the day, there'll be like 30 messages sometimes and it's kind of difficult to sit there. It takes hours. So I, I just keep chipping away at it throughout the day. I, I come up in the morning, wake up in the morning, have my breakfast, I answer the messages. I go out for a run, come back, answer a couple more, shoot off do my training, come back for some lunch, sit down, eat, answer some more, go back, come back, and then for the evening, I'll sit here for like two hours in the evening and just, just, just go through. These people, I can't, can't express to you how much they mean to me. It's, I get such, and people I've never met before, all across the country, some from other countries, just well wishing. It's amazing, I, I just, it's, it's humbling really. Um, so I owe these people, you know, because they keep me driven. So I, I make a point of answering every single one of them uh, and let them know just how appreciative I am. It's not even 7.30 in the morning and already we're answering the next celebrity call. The local paper have just run a news story about Nick, so we're going to go and see if we can hunt it down. This morning, um, done a, uh, what's that? Surrey Ed. Surrey Ed is a local newspaper for Surrey area. Um, done a local, um, 
charity thing for our baby care unit in the Royal Surrey Hospital. Um, it's really good to be a part of things like that. The lady asked me if I'd be involved, I said yeah. I look any good in the photo. <laughs> Hello. Hello, you, how are you? How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. She gets every bloody wear, doesn't she? Oh, God, she's on this as well. Oh, no. I'm not buying it because of her. <laughs> buying it because of me. Told me she was such a nice person. She is, she's alright. She is. She's horrible. <laughs> We've all got our crosses to bear, I guess. Yeah, hi, good girl. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Alright. What's funny about that? That lady's always talking to me when I go in. What's funny about that is obviously uh, I'm very good friends with Alex and I know Katie through Alex. She's on the front page of this this morning. <laughs> but I uh, always defend them. I always defend them. They're, they're just normal people, you know, right? So they've got a bit of fame, but uh, they're not bad people. Right, so let's see where I am this morning. I like it the way Katie's got a front page and I haven't. <laughs> Have a little look. Yeah, so this is quite. This is well. This is a fantastic cause, the baby care unit. I think these ladies that work in that unit there, what a job! I mean, you have, all the money in the world wouldn't make you do that job. That's pure passion. You know, they're taking care of these these babies, and some of them don't make it. So, it's scary. And the lady that I helped out, Bev. Hi Bev, if you're watching. So she's experienced this first hand, so this is why she's so passionate about the, uh, the baby care unit. They've helped her out a lot. So. Can't find me. I don't know where it'd be. Usually I'm easy to find because I'm in the sports section, but uh, I'm guessing this one, yeah, isn't in the sports section. Oh, there we are. Yeah. There we go. So this is Beverly. This is the lady that's uh, asked me to become involved, and I donated some tickets to the cause. That's uh, she. Uh, she's got a very worthy cause going here. She's raising funds. Um, this lady here, Jill Harwood, she's a local Lib Dem representative. She was really nice, friendly lady. Uh, and that's Joshua, Beverly's son. So, uh, got a signed shirt to auction for charity. I've obviously put my bits and pieces in for charity. So, uh, I'll attend the event and, um, just, you know, back them as much as we possibly can. So, if anyone's watching, you want to make a donation. Check this one out, guys. Back at Casa del Chapman, I've asked Nick to see if he can dig out some memorabilia from his previous fights. I'm Grant Mortman show in Portsmouth. Um, pride fighting. I desperately wanted to fight, so I, I contacted Grant. He matched me up. Um, started off at the bottom of the bill, but as I started to generate interest and the momentum started going, we started pumping out tickets. I ended up co main event with Tom Watson on my first fight. I had like 300 people in the crowd. Phenomenal. And um, it's quite a lot of pressure for my first fight. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I mean, I've done, I finished the guy in 32 seconds, ground and pound, which I was really pleased with. But you know what? It was really good. Two things about, about that event which really stick out for me. But the first one was, was these guys, Black Eagle. Now, I've never had a fight at the time. I had nothing to offer anybody. Uh, and I, I contacted Black Eagle and said, Would you do me a favour? Would you, would you take a punt on me and sponsor me? I've got a show in Portsmouth. They're based in Portsmouth. They sell all sorts of martial arts equipment and they, they were fantastic. They took a punt on me. They offered me a small sponsorship deal, but for, for a debut fight, I, I could not ask for better. So they really looked after me, took care of me. So in return, obviously, I put their brand out there and uh, we, we sort of had a, an excellent relationship ever since. And the second thing about the show, go on, come up to me after the show and presented me with this. Which obviously I was the poster boy on this particular event, but it was really decent of him. I wasn't asked to do, um, 
didn't ask him to do anything, but uh, yeah, he, he presented this poster. This was the poster that promoted the show, but he, he got it enlarged on like a decent quality material and handed it to me all rolled up. And then uh, a few friends of ours, uh, Alan and Maria, if you're watching guys, nice one, they, they took it away and brought it around as a, an engagement party present for me, all, all uh, framed up, which is really cool. So this is a, an excellent memorabilia from my very first fight, which uh, didn't last very long. Really pleased with that. And then after uh, fights at UCLA, we get one of these, which is pretty cool. On the back it says, Ultimate Challenge Winner. Now, I've always wondered what it says on the back of the one that the guy loses. Does it say, I'm a challenge runner up? I'm a challenge loser, I don't know. I've only ever had the winner one, so I'm cool. Um, but if I'm honest with you, people always say, oh, I desperately want to get one of these, this is what I want. But for me, it's not about trophies. I don't care about trophies, really. I love to fight, really. I just like punching people in the face when I get an opportunity to do so. And there's nothing better than putting someone to sleep with a, with a chokehold. But you know what I want more than anything? Belts. Trophies, medals, they're all, they're all cool, don't get me wrong, but for me this year, it's all about those two belts. The first one being July 2nd, British title. I'm having that one, lovely. Today, Nick has been asked to give a talk to young boys at Prospect School in Hampshire, a boys' school for children with learning and behavioral difficulties. Some of these boys regularly get into trouble. This is an issue that Nick holds dear, as he's seen firsthand what can happen when faced with difficult choices. Why is this sort of thing important to you, Nick? It's a good question. Um, I get asked it a lot. I, I do all this sort of work for free. I, when I was a young lad growing up, around where I grew up in Guildford, um, there's no other way to, to describe it, but I was a pain in the ass. I was a pain in the ass. I used to get into lots of trouble. Um, I kind of found MMA um, and obviously my wife who's a wonderful woman and with the two, with them two components in my life combined, it's kind of taken, I've got an inner peace now. I, I look back at the years I've wasted uh, and I just think to myself, I know what I needed back then. I needed a role model, I needed a way to channel my aggression, I just needed something. Uh, so now I've kind of got my life on track and I know where I want to go, I know what I want to do. Everything in my life is governed and I'm at peace with myself. I feel that I feel the need to, to do these things maybe if I can't make a difference to some of these young lads. You know, I, I spend a lot of time doing this and I think if I can just make a difference to one or two, then um, it's worth the effort. So I spend a lot of time with the youth projects, um, anti-social behaviour projects. I work with the police in Surrey, I work with the youth offending service. Um, and it gives me really good satisfaction and um, I feel like I'm very well qualified to make, make a difference to these youngsters.